Hello, everybody! This is the GitHub Podcast, a show dedicated to the topics, trends, stories, and cultures in and around the open source developer community on GitHub. I am your host, Cassidy Williams, and accompanying me today is our other lovely host, Kadesha. Hey, Kadesha. Hello, I'm Kadesha. We are on the developer advocacy team here, and we mostly wanted to talk today about building tools. I feel like especially in open source and stuff, you see so many just really tiny little specific tools that do one thing really well. Like I, I love that kind of style of things where it does, you don't need to have this thing that can fit every single thing in the world that you want it to do. It doesn't need to be a Swiss army knife. It could be just like a really good scissor or paring knife. And especially like building tools for things that you do all the time. Like, uh, like, for example, lately I've been loving building tools because AI takes away the the struggle of like building software. <laughs> and so so like one of the most mundane tool I built was the CSV to Markdown converter because I, I, I needed something for work and all the ones online have too many ads and just too many things going on. Boop, 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 boop. CSV to Markdown converter done. That's you so know, nice. it does a thing. It's perfect. Yeah. Th those little tools, like there, there's so many little things where like, for example, I, I have a personal newsletter, shameless plug. And every single week I have like an interview question of the week where people submit answers and, and they'll submit GitHub links, they'll submit code pen links, they'll submit social posts, various things. And gathering those every single week is tedious, but I figured out this way where I put it in just like my notes app whenever I see someone send it through. And then I have a little script that converts it to a list of markdown names. It's it's so small, but it has probably saved me so much time over the years. Mm -hmm. Well, and also just the mental overhead. I feel like the mental mm -hmm. overhead is even bigger than the the time saving. Yeah, I think the mental load is the most like incredible benefit or ROI on like building your own personal software, because I also have a newsletter like Cassidy and, you know, keeping track of your links to make sure that people know that, oh, they came from, you know, I am the one who sent these people here. You know, I built a UTM link tracker instead of like constantly having to type the same things over and over again. It just autofills, it just autofills all the fields and all I have to do is pop in the link and copy it. So I think like because of open source software, it's really enabled us to just kind of super power ourselves and our systems. Yeah. And I think like, there's building these tools, but then also finding these tools where it's nice yes. to be able to search. And then you're just like, oh, thank goodness someone built it. Yay. <laughs> and, then, and then you can just use it for like your very specific purposes. And it's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some of the tools that you've built lately? You mentioned the CSV to Markdown stuff. I feel like you're always building cool tools. One of the recent ones that I built that I'm very happy about is um, my links tracker. So I always, I, I'm constantly saving links that I find interesting on the internet, whether it be videos, blog posts, tweets, whatever. But I sent it to, I sent it to myself in my, um, what is it called? Like your messaging app. So I have an Android. And so I just, I text myself and then I can never find what I'm looking for. And I was like, oh, let's just build it. And so I build a mobile app to save my links. And it's been, it's been amazing because I can just easily search for things, can find it and I don't have to pay for it. And I don't have to pay for hosting. <laughs> What a concept. <laughs> like I'm all, I'm all for paying for hosting for an app that you use. No, of but course. It's, it, but it's so nice when it's something that you don't have to because you built it yourself, for sure. It's so small. And even like sometimes I do a lot of recordings. So I have like a, a speech to text app that does like a transcription. And then I can, you know, create content from that transcription. So just like little things like that to make my processes go faster. How about you? Yeah, no, very similar. It's it's a basically process optimization so that yes. way I don't have to think about things as much. Sometimes it's literally just reminder pings yes. or something like, like a notification or something. The tool that I probably use the most that I built for myself is a to-do app. It's literally just a to-do app, but I built it in a way where it's a desktop app. So it's like a separate window on my machine because otherwise I get distracted by browser tabs and stuff. 
but I added the ability to pause tasks. So if it's a task that I'm not going to get that day, get to that day, I can just pause it and it goes away. But the key part of it is there's a progress bar. But so as you check things off or pause things, it fills a progress bar. So you get like the nice brain juices as, as you finish things each day. And then it just resets at midnight, the progress bar. And it's, it's a very <laughs> small thing, but it's been so nice to have that. <laughs> I know, keeping track of tasks. Who would have thought that would have been? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And another one that I did was for uh, contracting. Whenever you do some kind of contract thing, whether it's for coding or for content creation or anything like that, you often have to give them a W-9 form if you're in the U.S. or a W-8 form if it's an international contractor. I don't know all the forms. I made an app that generates those. And oh, my word, it has saved me so much. Time. It's literally a button. Yes, I could just edit a PDF and, and just like change the date every single time, but it was just enough mental overhead. I made it so you click a button and then I get a new PDF with today's date. It's so nice. And like, why not build something if you can, right? Um, yeah. What do you think, especially now, like, what do you think about people leaning into personal software? Uh, what do you think about that concept? I feel like that's the future of software. Where a, a lot of software has been like one size fits all, and and I want it to be one size fits me. Maybe I'm being a little naive in saying that it's the future of software, but I do feel like because of where the maturity of so much open source is, where again, like you said, a lot of AI tools are and stuff, people can make things very custom to their preferences, and there's less time and mental overhead to build something that you might want to improve yourself. Or even like if you use a tool like Raycast or Obsidian or something where there's a plugin system, you can make a plugin yourself that will make it a little bit better just for you. All the time, like I feel like software engineers have been building their own personal tools. Yeah. <laughs> but now I think like that progress has been democratized where anyone can essentially build their own personal software and not have to think about, you know, like all the rigmaroles of like building software for the Internet because it's for your own use case. So is it the most secure and correct right. me if I'm wrong, I don't, you know, this is GitHub's official podcast, <laughs> but I feel like you don't have to think too deeply about, about it because it's just for your use case. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Well, and I think, yeah, this is, this is where we might get some angry now, but like, <laughs> it, I think, yes, you still build secure things when you can, but like you, like you said, if it's just for you, you don't have to worry about that as much. And if it's open source and more people want to use it, that's where people can start contributing to help make it more secure, you know? And, and so it doesn't have to all be on you, where it might originally start as a personal tool, where uh, I'll use my to-do list app as an example. That one, there's definitely some issues in PRs that I should fix. And, and, and there's things that features that people want. But I kind of made it clear in the contributing guidelines, if you want to do that, fork it and, and use and it for yourself. Do it. <laughs> it does exactly what I personally want it to do. And there's some ideas where I'm like, oh, that is a good idea. Okay, I'll do it. Like the pause button I mentioned, they suggested adding a resume button. That was a good idea. Stuff like that. I I wasn't going to do that, but I was like, eh, you know, that's, a, that's, that's smart. But besides that, you just don't need to make it the most powerful, great yes. thing in the world unless other people are using it. And again, that's where open source comes in. Yeah, that's where open source comes in. So fork it and use it, you know. I'm curious to see what the statistics are around forking projects for these sorts of things. Because it feels like I see more and more forks these days where it's people forking different projects to suit their needs and stuff rather than starting from scratch. I wonder what that balance is. It, it might just be the bubble that I live in. Maybe. I, I haven't personally noticed an uptick in forks. But but maybe maybe pe people feel more empowered to build now because, you know, they have their own personal assistance in their corner. Um, that could be a, a factor or maybe people see you know, yeah. it, it is a lot easier to build. So maybe others are like, oh, I can build, too. And they're not starting from scratch. I don't know. That's a very interesting um, question. Yeah, I was uh, speaking of what you just said, though, I, I was actually having a friend over yesterday and he was like, I want to actually start a side project. I've had this idea for this like personal dashboard where I just want to build it for myself, but 
I don't know any front end. He's very much like a back end core, like Go, C++, the, the, that level of languages. And he's like, I'm afraid to do, I'm afraid to do anything front end. And I was just like, okay, this is Astro. Let me introduce you to some of these. And then as he was starting, he, he basically just like let AI start a little bit for him. And then he started noodling. I was able to like explain some things as, as he was going. He had a dashboard within a couple hours and, and he was just like this would have taken me so long to get started. I've been wanting to do this for months, but I've been so intimidated because it's just not a stack that I know. And so this is where like, I do think it is pretty dang nice to have our eight AI tools available to us where I, I know that it's, it's definitely controversial in some circles to say so, but like you said, being able to unlock those barriers so that people can just get building, you still need to know how to build, but it's really nice to just have a companion to help you get that initial kickstart. Yeah. That is it, incredible. It was it was so cool to see because he fully like at first was like, ah, oh, this is tedious. I don't know. And then by the end, I, I had to kick him out. <laughs> we were just like, <laughs> bruh, it's almost midnight. You gotta go home. He was like, but I have something and it's working. And, and, and that's that's what that's what makes it so exciting when you have something yes. that's actually working and and you have that aha moment of like, wait, I'm I'm unblocked and I can just ship. It's it's yes. so exciting because it's you're like actively learning something, actively building something, and it's something that you can use. That's what I was saying. Like I I find it so much more fun to build now because I have my AI sidekick that will tell me you know where I went wrong or like how to fix something that is incorrect. I'm no longer like belaboring over software that I want to build and crying because I can't figure out the bug that's on line. 357 when it's just a missing semicolon, <laughs> but I just can't see it. You know, it's, I, I feel like um, building personal software and using open source and AI have really made building software more enjoyable. You know, it's, it's no longer tears and suffering and going, you know, scrubbing through the internet for that answer. I was going through project ideas and and kind of noodling on some yesterday while my friend was building. I was like, I'm motivated to build too. And I was like, dang, I'm actually using some of my domain names. What a concept. Because you always get these domain names and then never actually build the project. I am one of those people. But now I'm like, wait, I have domain names. I have project ideas and I'm not blocked on just starting some of them. It's awesome. And and we probably sound like such shills for our own company's products I know. and stuff. But it is it has been it true. Is awesome. where, yeah. Being able to do that, I there have been a few like open source projects where I'm like, wait, that's perfect. And I can fork it. And then I'll as I'm getting familiar with the code base, I'll use Copilot to be like, could you explain how these things are structured? And then I can customize it to myself. Mm -hmm. Game changer. So game nice. changer. It's like I really want an application that can take these um, very dense technical papers and create a podcast out of it. And I know I can use, you know, the tool that's available to do that, but eventually I'm probably going to have to pay for it. But I did find an open source tool called Podcastify that does exactly that. And it's the most amazing thing. And I can just use it locally for free. It's so nice. I was introducing the concept of this to a friend of mine recently who she, she was just like, I don't actually understand what your job is. What, what, what is, what is a GitHub? Um, and as I was explaining it, she was just like, wait, software is just free. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's what is free in this world, but, but people are building it. They put their time into it and they put it out for free because they care. And she's like, that's, amazing. It's like Wikipedia, but code. And I was like, exactly. That's kind of the perfect metaphor for it. And there's options for pretty much anyone where I, I was telling her there was a time in my life where I wanted to learn Photoshop, but I couldn't afford Photoshop. So I learned with the GIMP, which is an open source alternative, came out with 3.0 recently. And I just learned as many of the tools as I could there. And then eventually when I had Photoshop through work, I was able to say like, oh, I know how this works. And, and it was it was just one of those things where open source is, it drives so much of software. And whether it's a big tool like the GIMP or a small tool like a script that converts something, 
the, these kinds of smaller tools, big or, or big and small tools, when they're out in the open, just benefit everyone, and it's awesome. And I feel like um, with large language models being open source as well, some of them, I think that's also introducing more of the public to open source software. So mm-hmm. I hope that more people start using and contributing to open source software as they feel more empowered to build their own software, you know? Right. Yeah. Like I, I really, I hope we're ushering in a good generation of builders yeah. that like wants to not just build and, and ship and not think about like the quality of the code underneath, but who wants to understand like, I'm unblocked on building this because I can get started, but I can continue to build and improve my own knowledge as I'm building with, with all of these tools available to me. It's, it's an exciting time. Well, that being said, Kadesha, what are some open source projects that have been exciting you lately? Yeah, so um, it was actually our VP or our VP or our director who introduced me to this one this week. It's called My NPM Card. And essentially, you can create your own command line um, thingy. So like, let's say for example, somebody, you can build it and somebody can, you can build your script, somebody can run it and like NPX Cassidy, and it will be like your name, where you work or anything about you that you want people to know right in your, in their terminals. It's, it's amazing. So it's like a CLI business card. If it's open source, we could just do that right after the recording and NPX yeah. Cassidy will exist by the time the episode <laughs> is out. <laughs> well, that being said, thanks y'all for listening. This has been the GitHub Podcast and I have been Cassidy. You can find me at Cassidy on most things, C-A-S-S-I-D-O-O. And yeah, and I've been Kadesha. Thanks so much for listening. You can find me everywhere online at It's That Lady Dev. Yeah, see y'all later. Bye. Bye.